Rents are dropping and they are dropping fast across the US housing market, particularly in certain cities right now where investors are in absolute panic mode. They are freaking out because they are having to cut the rent by as much as 20 or 25% on certain listings, a situation which is going to lead to a mass fire sale of homes in these cities. And I'm reading some very alarming things right now from real estate data analysts about this slowdown in the rental market. Like if we go to apartments.com and CoStar, the biggest data provider for apartments in America, they just released a report saying rent went down in America nationally in August. And in particular, they identified certain markets like Nashville and Austin and San Francisco and Vegas and Raleigh and Orlando as the markets where rent declined the most. But these declining rents are not just good for renters, they're also good for home buyers because they're going to cause investors to sell off their portfolios because right now the typical investor in America is only getting about a four and a half percent income yield or cap rate when they buy a single family home and rent it out. Think about that everyone. Buying a house and renting it out gets you a four and a half percent return on average. That's not very good especially when mortgage rates have now surged to almost seven percent and especially when short-term government treasuries are now yielding over four percent. That combination basically means that real estate is a bad investment right now because if you use debt to buy an investment property well you're going to lose money because the cost of your debt is more than the income you're getting from your rent if you don't use debt well maybe you could still pocket four and a half percent but that's basically the same as what you would get by buying a short-term government bond so home prices in today's market make no sense at current rents and the only reason they haven't sold off their entire portfolio yet is because they thought that rent would keep growing into the future and eventually make their investment profitable. So now when you introduce the reality that rent is gonna go down, well, that completely blows up the last pieces of positive narrative that existed about the US housing market, which means that a lot of these sellers out there, and I'm talking to you guys, you sellers out there who are thinking you have some leverage and maybe you're pulling your house off the market right now because you can't get the price you want and you're thinking, oh, I'll just rent it. Well, that might not be such a good idea because your house might just end up sitting on the market for rent rather than for sale and you're just gonna end up selling into a worse housing market in the spring. So I think everyone knows at this point what's going on, right? We have a recession that's here and is getting worse. We have Jerome Powell going on a rate hike crusade. We have a massive asset and a debt bubble. We have backlog evictions and foreclosures surging. I mean, this is going to be a mess in the US economy and housing market over the next six to 12 months. So if you are someone who hasn't sold yet or is putting off selling, you better get to it because now is your last chance, especially if you're in a housing market like Nashville, Tennessee. This was a boom to Town during the pandemic. This is a market that investors loved. And now we're looking in Nashville. We're just seeing a deluge of both for sale and for rent inventory, particularly for rent, everyone. Look at this neighborhood southeast of Nashville. Look how many rentals are on the market. These are rental homes, one next to the other. Most of these are corporate landlords who are all having to cut the rent all at the exact same time because they can't find any renters. It's a similar situation going on in Jacksonville. Jacksonville is a market that the corporate investors loved over the last two years. Well, now they're starting to hate it because Redfin just reported that asking rents in Jacksonville are now officially negative. They're down year over year. Now, if you've been a long-term viewer to my channel, you probably remember that I've been predicting this rental crash for the last six to seven months. I did a video on it back in February. I did a video on it back in May. When everyone else was predicting that rents would continue to go up, I was predicting that they were gonna go down. And the reason I knew they were gonna go down was I simply looked at the data, everyone. I compared the growth in rent in a market like Miami to the growth in wages, and I realized it's not sustainable and that rents were eventually gonna go down. However, the rents are still high. So if you're looking at those rents in your market and you still think they're expensive, you're right. They have just started to go down and they will likely continue to go down over the next six months. So if you're someone who's renewing a lease or you're gonna sign a new lease, make sure to negotiate a bit with your landlord because you're gonna have more leverage. And the number one city, the poster child for this rental crash, the city I talked about in a video two weeks ago, Phoenix. There are now over 
5,000 single family homes available for rent in Phoenix. We're seeing very aggressive rent cuts. We are seeing apartment occupancy rates plummet. Very clearly the rug has been pulled out from under Phoenix's housing market and there's going to be a brutal crash. And later in this video, I'm gonna get into even more cities that are in the crosshairs of this rental market collapse where the investors are starting to sell out. You're gonna to wanna to know if you live in one of these cities or particularly one of these neighborhoods. But first, I wanna address a question that I think might be on a lot of your minds right now. You guys might be saying, hmm, Nick, I see the data, I see the decline in the rents even in my market, but how is this possible? Because the conventional narrative suggests, and tell me all if you've heard this in the comments, that the more that mortgage rates go up, the more that that should price people out of buying a home and thus increase the demand for renting a home. There's this idea out there that higher mortgage rates equals higher rental demand, but we're not actually seeing that in practice. We're seeing the exact opposite. And the reason is, very important you all understand this, is because we are in an overall housing recession. Demand for housing in general is going down because we are on the doorsteps of a recession. We have two years of 40 year high inflation. We have record low consumer sentiment. Whether someone's a buyer or a renter, they're both feeling very pessimistic right now. Whether it's someone who doesn't wanna buy at a sky high price, a sky high mortgage rate, or whether it's someone who's now being forced to move in with their friends and family because they can't afford their rent anymore. We're seeing demand destruction all across the housing market. And in particular, I wanna point you all to a tweet by Jay Parsons, who's the chief rental economist for RealPage, a company which tracks rents on over 11 million units. And he's saying just a couple days ago that Q3 2022, the preliminary rental market demand looked way with like five Ys weaker than expected. In particular, he says, we're seeing a slowdown in demand across all asset classes and markets. So this is across America, uh, but specifically the desert mountain region in Arizona, as well as Florida appear to be most impacted. And interestingly, he's saying that new lease rents like increases on rents are no longer a major driver of inflation, which is the other thing that you all need to be thinking about here with this slowdown and decline in the rental market is what does this mean for inflation going forward? If rents are now gonna go down in America, that means inflation is gonna go down over the next six to 12 months, which is good. However, we're gonna see inflation go down and potentially go down by a lot, like maybe disinflation or deflation, just as the Fed is aggressively hiking interest rates and is saying we're gonna keep interest rates high for the next year year. In my estimation, that combination is going to yield only one outcome, and that is a big, big deflationary crash. And for prices all across the economy to go down. And while that suggestion might sound crazy to some of you that we could have deflation, I want to explain that this has actually happened before in U.S. history. If we go back to what's called the Depression of 1920 and 1921, this occurred right after the last pandemic, right after a huge dose of inflation when the money supply expanded a lot in the mid-1910s. What happened next was that the Fed aggressively tightened monetary policy in 1919 and 1920, and that caused a big recession in the subsequent years where the unemployment rate went to 11%, and prices across the economy declined anywhere from 15 to 30%. And I'm not saying that's going to happen for sure, but it is a definite possibility. And it's a possibility that no one seems to be talking about or taking seriously, specifically those in real estate, many of whom are still operating on this inflation narrative that it's a good idea to buy real estate because of inflation. But very quickly, the tables are turning on that and they're going to continue to turn because we're going to continue to see inventory and specifically rental inventory pile up on the U.S. housing market. There's apartment builders right now. They're going crazy. Over 800,000 apartment units actively under construction. That is the highest level in 50 years, and those units are just now starting to deliver to the market and will continue to deliver into a market with weak renter demand. Meanwhile, we are now finally starting to see that big uptick in evictions I've been talking about on this channel. We are now starting to see that happen. Eviction Lab finally updated their eviction data, and what we're seeing is just a crazy surge in evictions across pretty much all all markets. In particular, evictions in Vegas have surged. Evictions in Houston have surged. Evictions in Philadelphia have increased substantially as they have in Richmond, Virginia, and as they have in Jacksonville. So just think about the math on this, everyone. Like this is crazy. We have surging evictions, a big backlog in apartment construction, just as we're already seeing rents going down, just as we're already seeing big reports of declining demand for new apartment leases. I mean, folks, this is not going to be some short-term couple month dip in rental rates in America. This is gonna be something that lasts for several years as the inventory continues to build. 
causing rents to continually go down. And if you live in these cities, most exposed to this, you better prepare because there's going to be massive deals coming your way, particularly in an area like Dallas. Dallas is a housing market that a lot of people are still optimistic on. However, when I look at the fundamentals, they don't make any sense to me. The cap rate, the investor profit in Dallas is around three and a half percent. It's really low because the property taxes are so high. So when you introduce gobs and gobs of rental inventory with rental declines into the Dallas market, just as home builders are going nuts, I think you all know what's gonna happen in Dallas, particularly the suburbs to the north. It's gonna be a massive crash, as is going to be the case in a market like Atlanta. Atlanta is the number one investor housing market in America. Nearly 40% of the homes in 2021 were purchased by an investor. And in some zip codes in Atlanta, that number was closer to 60%. And these investors had a habit of jacking up the rent on tenants in specifically poor poverty stricken neighborhoods who couldn't afford the rent while the investors jacked it up way too much. Now the demand is going down and the evictions are up and that's gonna mean big problems for the Atlanta housing market more broadly. Another city that is also now starting to really feel the pain on the rental market is one that no one thought would start experiencing this pain. Two to three months ago, everyone thought this city was impenetrable. There was just so many people moving there and nothing bad could happen in this housing market. Well, that is shifting quickly in the Miami metro area, particularly up in West Palm Beach. The rental inventory has gone insane, double from where it was four to five months ago. Now, before signing off everyone, I'm gonna leave you all with one statistic that I want you to remember. This is, of all the statistics in this video, this is the most important one to remember, is that in America, there's 100 million single family homes. Of those 100 million, 28 million are owned by investors. So we have 28 million homes that are owned by people who don't live in them. So the question is, what do those people do when they're faced with a triple whammy of declining prices, declining rents, and increasing interest rates, which lower the relative value of their investment compared to government bonds. Well, it's obvious what they're gonna do. They are going to sell, and they are gonna sell in a mass wave. And if even only 5% of all the existing investors were to sell, if only 5% were to sell, that would triple the amount of inventory on the US housing market. And so in the short term, maybe some people don't list, maybe they decide to rent instead, maybe they decide to wait until the spring, but the reality is if this decline in the rental market in America persists along